Hi, cellists. Today I'd like to speak about one of my favorite concertos, the Haydn D major concerto. This is a piece I've worked on with Bernard Greenhouse, my old teacher, uh, which I loved so much. He was a, a student of uh, Pablo Casals, and I feel like I'm uh, Casals' granddaughter, cello gr granddaughter. Um, and so let's go right in, get your coffees, and let's start. I learned to control my vibrato, um, namely the speed of my vibrato and the amplitude uh, later in my career. I already won some major competitions, I already played with some big orchestras, and so I think that if I could do it, you can do it too, if you are uh, concerned about uh, changing your vibrato. It was through the Haydn D concerto that I uh, learned to control my vibrato more than any other piece and I wanted to share this knowledge with you. Uh, the cello starts in bar 29 and um, right in the beginning you can think of which uh, finger you want to start for uh, the third or the first because we have to switch to the first finger in the second beat. So uh, there's pros and cons to both. Um, start with the first finger though, uh, you can be sure that your intonation is not going to waver uh, because you're staying on the first finger for that second beat. Uh, and then I've worked on that slide so many hours. Uh, it's uh, almost like a laugh. Uh, This uh, second bar of a concerto requires uh, enormous control of your bow and your left hand. Uh, you can start down or start with the first finger. Uh, there are um, problems with starting on a down bow because then you really have to save your bow in order to be able to kind of uh, jump a little bit off the string on the second, uh, on the, the sixth triplet. It's of course possible, but I like to start up bow and connect the uh, B and the D. When you start not only talking about uh, which finger you use, also connect the line from the first F to the second F if you can. This F and the second F. Think of vibrating a uh, very narrow vibrato just to liven your sound on those last two sixteenths of bar 30. And whether you change your bow there or not. Uh, uh, if we vibrate uh, many of the 16th notes in this movement um, call for a little bit of livening of the sound and this uh, can really help you relax your left hand. Uh, I'm not talking about a big vibrato, massive vibrato, uh, just a little wiggle. And again here, on those two 16th notes, G and A. Again here in bar 33. So this I uh, try to see if you can um, practice at home with a little wiggle. Uh, eventually you might not do it because uh, it might sound a little too romantic, but this is certainly um, a technique to uh, try and help our left hand uh, in relaxing, and especially in those high positions. Uh, a lot of us are really worried about playing in tune up here. Um, change of character as you saw I played just now uh, from the lyrical to the more uh, assertive um, so here this is more lyrical in my opinion and here and here we have a more rhythmic
typical uh, assertive uh, character. Again, in bar 35, you can use your vibrato uh, to help relax uh, the left hand. I know it's, it is counterintuitive, perhaps, for you, uh, news <laughs> um, that you can use a vibrato to relax the hand, uh, but I don't think it's possible to vibrate when you, our hands are very tight, so... <laughs> Again, this is perhaps something uh, you can try at home. Uh, I'm not sure you want a huge wiggle there. Uh, and perhaps eventually you will not use any vibrato here. Here, uh, I do suggest you use vibrato in performance as well, uh, in bar 36. Uh, So um, the B, uh, downbeat of bar 36, uh, can start with a narrow vibrato and grow uh, until you reach the second beat of that bar. And of course the inflection is uh, going up to the F sharp. Here again uh, on the A, G sharp A, we can again vibrate slightly. And then you need to separate with your bow slightly. Uh, you don't want to hear. Yeah, we don't want to hear that. A bow 37. I use a short bow. You can leave your thumb uh, in bar 38. Uh, as an anchor. In bar 37, uh, you can look online at IMSLP and see uh, the score in uh, Haydn's handwriting, and uh, you will see that he left a lot of choices for us for the cellist uh, regarding slurs. Uh, one option would be but of course you can find your own uh, just uh, so you are aware uh, that this manuscript is in fact online and you don't have to just take a, an edition and uh, treat it as if it's uh, written in stone. In bar 41 uh, I use my index finger to dig into the string a little more. <laughs> passage is not as light as uh, the material we had before. Um, the lower register of the cello also, I think, calls for a more guttural sound. Um, be sure you practice especially this, uh, but the whole concerto with a metronome. Um, here in bar 42, if you look at the score, uh, the orchestra plays a steady beat and... <laughs> important to be um, pretty straight there. In bar 42, I reverse my slurs in the last beat, so, so here, both visually and sound-wise, I think uh, it adds uh, some flourish. Uh, it is a virtuosic concerto after all. Oh, here. <laughs> So here, uh, this low E catapults you to the uh, high E. Um, I cheat a little bit in order to find, to play this high E in tune. Not like this. So I tap the string very quickly before I play the note. Uh, nobody will hear it. And uh, unless you're recording, in which case you might have to uh, practice a little more. And this brings us to the second theme, uh, which is in the low register of the cello. Uh, the first theme was in a high, more uh, uh, airy, perhaps, uh, sound. And here we have a, a more baritone sound. Um, a timbre. timbre is very important. And I, I used to 
talk about this uh, with Bach. Um, so. <laughs> play your A, uh, first of all, Haydn writes in his own hand, Sul corda G, meaning uh, stay on the G string, um, on the G string, literally, and um, when you play the A, try to uh, play it only with your third finger, this will give you uh, more um, amplitude to the A and a richer sound. Uh, if you keep your second finger or even the first, uh, this limits your movement. Uh, it's like a crutch. You have to also realize that the phrase uh, goes, uh, it is a rainbow, as Casals used to say, a phrase goes up and then down, and the height of the phrase is on that A, and so we want to build our vibrato accordingly as well. So I'll uh, start with a little less. And then uh, the second um, sub-phrase here. So we have two parts to this phrase. Uh, one. And then light up. Uh, notice how uh, my D has a, a faster vibrato than my C sharp. The vibrato relaxes towards the C sharp to close, to end this uh, phrase. Um, you don't want to play. And I'm exaggerating. Um, so if you compare, this is the vibrato on the C sharp, small amplitude, meaning it doesn't move very widely and, and not very fast either, but the D has a little more, so, so the D you can feel like your whole arm is moving a little more. Um, and this is how uh, is, is one technique and a very important one to uh, create a phrase.